My last opportunity to shadow was with Paula Robertson at Altman Middle School. And Paula works in our, our kitchen as a food service professional. So I was able to come in in the morning and help prepare for our breakfast uh, serving for kids. And after the breakfast was served, then to help prepare for lunch. A few things that I was the most impressed with, with my time in, in our, our kitchen at Altman, but also in my time in, in interacting with food service professionals throughout the district, are two, two aspects. One, the menus that we are now working on and the type of food we're serving kids. It's very important for our professionals to serve a highly nutritious meal and a great tasting meal. The, they do a lot of work with preparing new menus and doing scratch cooking and really ha helping to create a homemade meal for kids both during our breakfast uh, uh, hours and our lunch hours. The other thing that I was impressed with is the culture that our food service professionals create in the kitchen areas. Though they're warm and inviting and truly creating a home away from home for kids when they come in to eat. I watched Paula interact with kids when they came into the, the area for breakfast and lunch. She knows their name. She knows a bit about them. They do a lot of interacting. Kids came in to talk to people back in, in the kitchen, the different folks that they've gotten to know. So it's, it's more than just serving food for our food service professionals. It's about getting to know the kids and doing everything they can to create a positive environment so when they go back to class, they're primed and ready to learn. And I wa watched that firsthand with Paula. One aspect that you'll see is that I thought I was moving along and doing a pr pretty good job the first day in uh, helping Paula. And about an hour into it, I asked her for a little bit of an evaluation and she said, you really need to move a lot faster. So the other thing that I think you need to know the volume of work that gets done in a short time to not only serve a meal but prepare for the next day is very impressive. The folks there are on the go every minute and there's, there's uh, a tremendous amount of food get, uh, that is prepared for the very next meal but also meals in the future. Why don't we, t we take a moment to watch me in action and, and you can critique for yourself how well I did. Hi, I'm here at Altman Middle School with Paula Robertson, and I have the, the good fortune to, to see our process in the morning for preparing for breakfast and lunch for the kids at, at Altman. We know it's so critical for learning that our kids go to class ready to learn and have a good meal in their uh, system. And so, Paula, could you tell me a little bit about um, uh, how long you've been with, with us in the district and what's the best part about your position? I've been in the district for like 18 years and I like to, my days are busy and I like to do the food and I enjoy working with the children. Great. And Paula's day starts at 6 in the morning to prepare for our first breakfast which we usually serve between 75 and 100 breakfasts yes. each morning which is a critical uh, meal obviously for kids to get them going. Um, can you talk a little bit about how our menus have changed over the years and some of the focus that you have here at Altman on trying to provide uh, new and, and different uh, menu items? We are trying to go um, healthier, as in the more healthier, more variety of fresh fruits and more veggies and lettuce. And um, we are going to whole wheat now with of most things. We're trying to convert everything over to whole wheat and versus the white grains, so it's more whole wheat grains and just offer a lot of fruits and veggies. The entree now is a little smaller so that they can offer more room for the fruits and the veggies so that can be your filler instead of the big entree. And you might hear the noise because I need to keep working because there's kids coming in a few hours to eat lunch. But also, um, you had mentioned that we have a council of kids that help with uh, taste tests yes. or menu development. How, yes. how, do, how do you get them involved? Um, they ask about about 10 kids out of a student council and they get them together and they go upstairs and then from the district they create new foods and just recently they were just upstairs testing some new foods. We have a new Cuban sandwich and they tied that out and they like that and they introduced a couple other foods that they had tried and so that's just something that we we'll maybe do in the future for taste testing purposes if they liked it or not. And what they did try, they did like, we had a ravioli soup, which was, they really liked that one, which I was surprised, but that went over really well. And then we also tried a Greek salad, but that didn't go over very well. That was not very good. I didn't even like that one, so. 
Well, we hear a lot about eating locally grown food um, for health reasons and for freshness. What do we do here at, at Altman to try to utilize uh, locally grown vegetables and fruits? I know they were working with a farmer and we got our homegrown apples from them. And we got a bunch of cases of apples that we've been doing for the very beginning of the year that we were doing homegrown apples of different varieties. The other thing I noticed when you were out at the register that you know a lot of the kids by names or, or all of them, which is, I, I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great. I get the same, pretty much the same crew that Great. I come down here and eat daily. So yeah, I get to know them. And it's a smaller group in the morning, so you can get to know them one-on-one -on -one versus at lunchtime when you get, you know, I mean, I got about 100 kids I'm dealing with, so I can get to know those 100 kids real easy. And they tell me stuff and they talk to me and when there's no one out there to talk to, they'll come back here and talk to us. and help us out sometimes if we need stuff done or whatever. Oh, that's great. So they like to interact back here too. Yep. Um, one year, a couple years, we had special eds that used to help us pan up juice for us, the little, the juice that we serve for breakfast. So we got all the boxes open for them. We set them out there. They came in, put their hair nuts on, washed their hands, and then they panned juice. And they loved to do that. They did that once a week for us. Oh, that's great. So it kept them busy and it made them feel good. So mm -hmm. it was fun. And what, what is your favorite menu item? either to make or to eat? Uh, Chipotle burrito. Ah. And I like to make it too, but yeah. yeah. And then how often does our menu change? There's a cycle, correct? The, two week menu? cycle. Every two weeks? Mm -hmm. And then throughout the year, then we see similar menu items every two weeks, but there might be some changes yep. with yep. fruits changes or, throughout or the year, salads. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's kitchen is different. I mean, all their setups are different and they do, you know, somewhat the same food, but I mean, everything is different in the kitchen. You know, you go into one kitchen versus another kitchen, it's totally different mm -hmm. in the way they do things. Well, Paul, I really appreciate you letting me shadow you and taking your time and probably getting in your way more than uh, okay. normal. Mm, you're fine. So I'm just curious on how I did. If you were gonna evaluate my work, could I come back to work tomorrow or or what, what do I need to do to improve? Just, yeah, you can come back to work tomorrow, but you'd have to go a lot faster than what you did today. But other than that, yeah, you're fine. Okay, see? I mean, we're on a time frame. You know what I'm saying? We're on a time frame, so everything you do has got to be done. Like, and I thought I was just moving along quickly, <laughs> but apparently I have no clue. Oh, you're no fine clue. for not ever, yeah. <laughs> Thanks.